Hey y'all, welcome to Back to Basics with Crystal. So we are back in the garden today and I am still planting seeds. I thought I'd bring you guys along and tell you what I am planting. Now I know that some of y'all are saying, hey, wait a second, we're in the last week of July and you're still putting seeds in the ground? Must be your fall seeds, right? And that would be incorrect. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're all about gardening naturally, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I post a video. Now, like I've said in previous videos, a lot of people think that when their spring vegetables are gone and done for the season that their season is actually over. Well, if you live in zone nine, like I do, or maybe a zone eight or zone seven, all the way up into about a zone six. Now zone six is sort of pushing it. At zone six, you've got about 78 days till your average first frost. Um, zone seven, you're hovering right at around 95. Zone eight, you're somewhere around 100. And for me, my zone nine is about 120 plus days. I think it's like 123. Now your average last day of frost, well, that's an average. And you need to keep in mind that you could get a frost a little earlier than your average, or you could get a frost a little later than your average. So it's really important you plan accordingly. Now, if you don't know what garden zone you're in, I will link below a couple of places where you can figure out where your gardening zone is. And if you know your garden zone, but you're not too sure uh, how many days you have to your average last frost, the Old Farmer's Almanac, which I will list below, I'll link it below, has a really good calculator. You plug in your zip code and it gives you all kinds of great information. It's a really great source to use. Now, armed with the knowledge of my last average frost day, I have been planting accordingly. And let me tell you guys what I am planting now. So we're gonna back up a couple of weeks and I'm gonna tell you what I planted first for my late summer garden. Because let's get real here, we don't really have fall here in Southeast Texas. We have summer and we have fake summer we have a little bit of winter and then we have spring summer all at one time so we don't really have a fall like other parts of the country okay so backing up a couple of weeks in the far row right over to the right of me I planted old Tennessee melon and banana melon now both of those take around 90 to 100 days to maturity which means from the time that I put the seed in the ground to the time that I'm starting to first harvest is right at around 100 days. So in the row, right next to the heirloom melons, I've got a hybrid cantaloupe. Now, hybrid does not mean that it's GMO. Um, it means that they took a couple of different um, melons, crossed them, looking for certain traits, and that's where you get the hybrid type fruits and vegetables. Um, so I planted those, and I also planted a hybrid watermelon, and this is a hybrid watermelon. Um, I've got a red one, and today in the spots where I see um, seeds did not come up or maybe they came up and died out because they got smothered out by the hay, I'm going to go in with an orange flesh uh, watermelon. Now the watermelon and the hybrid cantaloupes, they take roughly 75 to 80 days. So we know we'll be harvesting somewhere in October. Now my next row over, actually my next two rows over, I am going to plant some more summer squash. Summer squash takes anywhere from 60 to 70 days to mature, um, which means we still have lots and lots of time for the vine boards to get our zucchini. Now I haven't exactly decided what I'm planting, but here are the seeds that I've kind of pulled out. So you can see here. These are the ones that 
And this, let's see, where is it? This one right here I'm most interested in. So this is what I'm gonna start with for sure. But the rest of these, I might plant one or two of each just to um, have a nice variety. Now here in the south, when you're picking out uh, your summer squash and your squash seeds to plant this late in the year, keep in mind that not all squashes are going to like the heat of the summer. For example, this one right here, which I guess technically is a winter squash, I planted this about two years ago in my garden and it started off great. But as soon as it got hot, it really died back and it just didn't want to do anything but kind of lay on the ground. So just keep that in mind, that not all squashes, not all melons, and not all cucumbers, you get the idea, are not going to like heat. And just in my last video, which I'll link above for you, where I talked about how I look to other countries and what they're planting to inspire me what I'm going to plant in my garden. Now the next thing I'm gonna be planting is I'm gonna do a second round of pickling cucumbers. The pickling cucumbers that we have right now, um, they're really looking sad and it's time to go ahead and get them pulled out of the ground and get something to replace them. So I'm gonna go back with two rows of pickling cucumbers only because I've got a lot of people looking for pickles right now and I've really gotta ramp up the pickle production. I'm also going to plant a couple of different varieties of slicing cucumbers. I wanna try out a couple of different varieties I've never tried and we're gonna see how they respond in the heat of the summer. Now most cucumbers, have an average maturity date of 55 to 65 days. So as you see, we'll still have plenty of time to grow the cucumbers. I'm also gonna go back in with some okra. Now okra is about 60 days to maturity and this one, which is a burgundy okra, is one of my favorites to grow. And just so you know that when you cook this, it actually turns green. It doesn't stay the burgundy color, but it's a beautiful, beautiful plant and it tastes really good too. And you see my poor, poor pickling cucumbers over there. Well, those are gonna be pulled out and replaced with my long yard beans. Now you're probably wondering why I'm going to plant the beans where my cucumbers were. Well, beans, in case you didn't know, are a soil fixer. They put nitrogen back in the soil. So when you have plants that um, are heavy feeders, it's really a good idea to go back on something that's going to fix that soil. That way you're not so dependent on different fertilizers and your soil will definitely thank you later. So speaking of soil fixers, these are Thai Double Blue Butterfly Peat. Well, actually, not that guy. That guy is not. That guy is an Im imitation. I'm kidding. This is a bitter melon. Um, they're growing here together. So this is bitter melon right here. This is a the Thai Double Blue purple butterfly pea, something like that. Anyway, this plant is a legume. It is a soil fixer. It's in the legume family like bees, peas, uh, that sort of thing. So in this area last year where I'm growing these, I grew zucchini and I grew giant zucchini. And so in order to fix the soil back up, I put these plants in here and you can see they're doing quite lovely. And even the bitter melons that are growing right beside them are just huge and prolific. And I have yet, I have yet to fertilize any of this. This is just plants fixing the soil for the next generation of plants. Yeah. Definitely more of that science-y smart stuff there. Now the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a second planting of basil. I've got a couple of different basils. One for sure is holy basil. I'm gonna plant lots of that, sprinkled all throughout the garden. Um, here and there, it'll uh, help repel bugs and it will help bring in the pollinators if I allow them to um, bloom. So I'm going to do that. And last but not least, of all of this late summer gardening, we are going to plant a second round of tomatoes. Yes, yes, you heard me, a second round of tomatoes. Yes, I know it's hot. Yes, I know that tomatoes don't like to put on blooms when it's hot. Yes, I know. No, I am not gonna be starting from seed. I'm gonna be starting from suckers. <laughs> now, I just pulled these suckers off and I have a few more to grab but I wanted to pull these and show you what I'm gonna do. Now, in the early spring, when the soil is still very moist, I just stick the sucker straight into the ground. With it being so hot and with 
the fact that I'm gonna be so busy over the next few days, I'm afraid that I'll actually forget to water these guys. So I'm actually gonna start these in water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm definitely gonna come in here, let me put this down, I'll show you on a single one. All right, so I'm definitely gonna come in here and take off any fruit that it's trying to put out. I'm gonna take that off and we're gonna take off all of the bottom leaves, okay? Just like that. Yep, nothing up there. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is put this in a jar with about this much water in it. No more, just this much. And you see all these little hairs? Oh, can you see that? I can, hopefully you can. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. You see all these little hairs? Those are future roots. So by putting them in water, um, they'll actually start to root out. And by the time I'm done planting all of these, we'll have some nice little nodes that I, don't ha I won't have to worry about as much. So this will be my second planting of tomatoes, but I'm kind of taking a cheater. I've already started these seeds earlier in the spring, so I've already paid for the seeds, so these guys are freebies. Hey Y'all, that's what's going on in my garden. That's what I'm planting right now, and I hope that this video actually inspires you to get back up off the couch and get your second planting of plants in, especially if you're in zone nine, like me, you're in zone eight, in zone seven, and we're kind of pushing it on the zone six. And one last thing before we go, when you're putting these seeds into the ground in the heat of the summer, you wanna make sure that you're keeping the soil very, very moist. So for me, in zone nine, I will come out twice a day and just do a light watering of where I have the seeds planted. I'm not gonna worry about watering the whole ground, just where I have the seeds planted. You want to make sure that you keep the soil nice and moist to encourage those seeds to germinate. Y'all, I hope this video inspires y'all, and I hope that you learned something. And if you did, please give me a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we post a video. Now I got to see what Roscoe's barking at, so I will talk to y'all later. Y'all be blessed. Bye now.